Meantime, Ukrainian lawmakers have been meeting with their counterparts from across Europe in recent weeks, desperately trying to find ways to counter Russia's attacks. Ukrainian parliament member Lesia Vazlinko uh, joins us now to talk about this. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thanks for being here. And first off, what is your reaction to the NATO summit? Uh, hello, uh, and it's a pleasure to be with you, and also from Kiev, uh, where the city is still standing and the people are still strong. Uh, the NATO summit, uh, it's great that it happened, but I think that the words of President Zelensky need to be marked and need to be given as much attention as possible. And he said exactly that at the moment, Ukraine and Ukraine's army has proved itself worthy of NATO. And uh, I will add here that maybe worthy of two or three NATOs. Uh, we have been standing up for one month against the second largest army in the world and the nuclear power at that, doing it largely with our own resources, with uh, limited help of weapons to, uh, that have been given to our armed forces. But all the same, uh, all of this time, NATO member states, which was much more developed, sophisticated armies, have been standing on the sidelines, sort of watching the situation in Ukraine as a Netflix TV series. And uh, with that, I think that uh, NATO can be doing more and should be doing more in Ukraine, not just for the sake of Ukrainians and Ukraine, but the sake of uh, global uh, defense and security and of the global defense and security framework that we know and that we treasure so much in the civilized world. Was there anything that came out of it that, that pleased you, that you wanted to hear? To be honest, the only thing that Ukrainians want to hear right now is when uh, other countries will start supporting us really by standing here in Ukraine on the ground and in the air. The only thing that can stop Putin is a force that he can no longer reckon with. And unfortunately, it's only through forceful measures that this, uh, this war can be ended and that Putin's aggression can be stopped from spreading. The problem with his aggression is that he, he is uh, doing it in order to kill, to exterminate Ukraine and Ukrainians. And uh, with such a goal in mind, there's nothing uh, that will make him stop. No words, no agreements, no contracts, nothing. Uh, so in order to stop his aggression, which is just growing stronger every day, and his greed is growing stronger with it every day as well, uh, in order to stop it, the countries of the free world, if they are still considering this, themselves as countries of the free world, must, must unite efforts and push him back, push him back into Russia, and then help Russia get rid of this totalitarian dictator and uh, reform the country so that the people of Russia can also be free of his uh, terrorist grip. And you've been talking about this uh, amazing resistance that you, the Ukrainian people have been putting up. It's been a month now since the invasion began. Uh, Ukraine has surprised the world. And we know Putin's playbook, right, based on Crimea and Chechnya. What do you expect him to do going forward? And how do you expect to hold him off if the demands are not met that you talk about, the no-fly zone and troops on the ground? You know, I don't think there's actually any way around it and that eventually uh, the West will start reacting. Maybe not in the whole, uh, in, in the whole uh, number of uh, NATO member states that will be here on the ground. Maybe it will start with, with just a few who are most concerned and most at risk of being hit by Putin, such as the Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, such as Poland, such as the Czech Republic. Croatia may start reacting, um, and then others will follow. I mean, uh, there's no way that others cannot follow because essentially uh, Putin is targeting not just Ukraine. He, he, he wants more. He wants to rebuild the Russian Empire. And uh, this power struggle, it's a power struggle between democracy and authoritarianism. And if we want to put an end to authoritarianism and support democracy and human rights, then it's only right to, to come in and start acting now to, to stop this aggression. And I don't take the argument that is often being put forward that apparently if one of the NATO countries or several NATO countries uh, will be acting here on Ukraine on the ground, then this will be considered as a provocation by Putin and he will start hitting all the other NATO countries. He will do no such thing for the very simple reason that he has no resources to spare and that he will keep 
being concentrated on Ukraine and Ukraine alone. And there are the countries which are supporting Putin. You can see it by the votes in the UN General Assembly. These countries are few and they are not strong. We're talking about Syria. We're talking about um, Vietnam. We're talking about uh, who else was that? Cuba. Who was, uh, South Africa. I mean, like, they are, these are literally like three or four countries. That is it. All right. Well, Leslie Veslenko, thank you, all, as always, for your time. I, I know it's a difficult time for you. We appreciate you making the time for us. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.